The township of Fernshaw was established in the mid-1800s. It was a stopover on the Yarra Track. So when people were going to the Woods Point Goldfields, they stopped at Fernshaw. There were a couple of pubs and people had their cottages and their gardens. And of course they planted out their gardens with, with plants that were beautiful. And Sestrum's got a beautiful flower. So it was considered an easy plant to grow. So that's where it started in people's gardens. With 1850, we had the gold rush here in Victoria. And there was lots of people around here prospecting. And they would come across our mobs burning and they would think that we were trying to burn them out. And basically, because there were so many people came to Victoria for the gold rush, we were very, very quickly removed off our land and our practices were stopped. But no one ever actually asked us why we were doing the things that we did. When uh, the Board of Works decided to close the catchment, to uh, make it a closed catchment to provide water to the growing city of Melbourne, the town was closed down and all the houses were removed. The gardens stayed and over the preceding 130, 140 years, spread up and down the valley. Sestrum is a really good weed in that it ticks all the boxes. It's uh, spread by animals. It, if you, a bit breaks off and falls in the river or drops on the ground, it grows. It's very aggressive. It can get into areas of forest that seem reasonably uh, undisturbed. It grows to four plus metres high. So the trees and tall shrubs survive and they're very tall tree ferns. But everything else just gets literally covered over, deprived of light and nutrients and just dies. My father uh, was taught to fish in the Watts River and it's been a, a pastime that we still continue today to fish here for eels, for blackfish, uh, but in particular the freshwater cray. We do still get today out of the Watts River, not in the numbers we used to, uh, but they are still there. For fauna populations it means um, loss of food sources, essentially. So plants that they would usually use for habitat, for food, for nesting, just aren't there anymore. And so you find that um, animal populations and fauna populations move out of areas if they don't have the suitable habitat for, that they need. Sestrum was filling up a large space of the lower Watts River Valley. So it was filling up the floodplains. It was up the tributaries along the waterways. So we're losing all that biodiversity. It's becoming extremely simplified. So the more you simplify the biodiversity, the more you open it up for other invasion by other species, be it weeds or be it pest animals. So what we want to do is we want to maintain maximum biodiversity. That's why it's a healthy ecosystem. As the vegetation condition decreases, you start losing um, water quality because the water coming through that vegetation isn't being treated in the same way or filtered in the same way. And so it actually has impacts on your water quality at the lower end. A continual safe, healthy water supply is a function of a healthy biodiverse forest. And so the work we're doing to protect the, the rivers and the tributaries and the creeks and the floodplains effectively protects the forest that provides water to, to Melbourne. The first steps involved treating mature plants. So mature plants four plus metres high across the entire floodplain. In the beginning there was approximately 160 hectares of uh, areas that we were treating for Sestrum. Originally, when we were treating it, we were hiking in from a fair distance, so it might have been two or three k's hiking to these spots where the hot spots were. Uh, we were taking brush cutters and chainsaws into these locations. And so it involved just a lot of physical work of, of cutting large plants, stacking them. They learnt very quickly, if you put them on the ground they grow again and that's what makes it a really good weed. If it is left on the ground, particularly in a moist area, it will re-root and uh, re-shoot. So you might have multiple plants from one plant. And if we can, we like to dry the roots out. So it'll be left in a pile or put in a, maybe a fork of a tree. And that first stage took roughly two and a half years. And so the first stage of cutting soon moved, it shifted into a stage of treating large, vast areas of seedlings that were coming up across the floodplain. Then we moved on to doing line searches and actually just hand pulling. Working in these areas is incredibly rewarding because you are protecting some of your highest quality areas and some of your best waterways. It's also very challenging because obviously you're working in sometimes quite remote areas and areas that have inherent safety risks. So you have to manage those quite carefully. Now they're searching areas, eight people walking into an area, maybe a couple of metres apart, searching for the small seedling. When we find Sestrum, we all hold the line and then someone will go over and mark it on our trimble. 
So when we're walking down the waterways, we can see all the old points on the Trimble. So we can see where we're coming up to an old patch where there might be like seedling sessions that have come back. So we can all like come together and have a bit of a look around. Then we pull it out, mark it, and then just form our line again and continue working down. And from then on, it was every two months, they'd revisit that site, check for seedlings, check for any flowering plants, and then expand the area. So now we've mapped the whole area and we're seeing areas where it's not re-emerging. So for two years, three years, or even four years, nothing has come back. Once you take over managing a piece of land, you've got to keep reassessing and identifying any new problems and the returning of the old problems that you may have dealt with. The continuing follow-up and monitoring is a really important part. The aim of the whole project is to just stop the plant from reseeding. Because if we let the plant seed, we sort of go back to square one. The original assumption for this project was that the seed persists in the soil for about 10 years. So we knew that it was going to be a long-term project. And so it's really rewarding to get to the end of this and see that the original assumptions we made when we first did it are starting to be played out now in that we're only finding seedlings, we're only finding juveniles, and that we're actually depleting that seed bank to the point where it isn't going to be able to reinfest the catchment. The results of this program mean that we're effectively protecting one of our highest value waterways in the Greater Melbourne area. We're protecting the river, we're protecting the ecology, and um, we're looking after the most important areas that we actually physically don't have the skills to replace when they're gone. We all want to preserve nature. It doesn't matter whether they're Melbourne Water, uh, Forest Fire Management, DELP, or Aboriginal people. Everyone is looking for the same goals.